I most certainly wouldn't. I wouldn't let this season pass me by because God is about to do some extraordinary things in your life. Believe me when I tell you, extraordinary things in your life. My God, my God. I wanna, I wanna wish everybody a happy after Father's Day Sunday. And I want you to uh, continue to love on your father and uh, the one that uh, helped raise you, the uncle that became the father, the brother that became the father. I know it's different from Mother's Day, but I pray that you enjoyed last week and that this week you will be just carrying it on, building brand new relationship. I believe God for you for that. Gather all of your family around. Let's turn the living room into a sanctuary. It's not going to be long before we're going to all come back together. Boy, we had some church up under the big top tent. We experienced the power of God. And I'm telling you, the minute he gives us the go, we're going to go. And we're going to move in. And we're going to do great and mighty exploits in the name of Jesus. All right? So get a neighbor, get a friend, call them, tell them I want them to, I want them to, uh, how can I say, uh, uh, you, know, you can say call a neighbor, call a friend, ain't nobody calling no more, they texting and they tweeting and what, what have you, tell them to join and so subscribe, uh, join, uh, like and share, do that for me, all right? Still wearing the mask. How I worship and adore you, Master. Teach me, teach me how to, how to honor you, honor you with my. I will bless you, precious, precious. Now, let's pray. Let's go into prayer on this morning, believing God for your breakthrough, for the presence of the Lord is in this place. You're great and you're wonderful. You do miracles so great. There is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you. We searched all over and couldn't find anyone like you. Woo, shataba, sakataba, wokobo shataba. You are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one like you. Oh Lord, there is no one else like Father, we thank you this morning in the name of Jesus. You're the lift of our head and the strength of our heart. You make ways out of no way. It is you that causes us to walk over on dry land after we've come out of a stressful situation with Egyptians and Philistines and Babylonians. You've delivered us from our captivity and put joy unspeakable in our spirits and in our heart. After a year and a half of this uncontrollable demon that they call Corona, you've still proven yourself to be God. And we give your name praise this morning. You're worthy of the praise. Be the healer of our body. Be our source, dear God. For we know that every good and perfect gift comes from above, comes from the hands of the master that made it. Now, God, provide for our families. Cause us to enter into a brand new relationship and uh, 
give us victory over every storm. We give your name the praise. The honor shall be thine. We thank you this morning for waking us up with our minds stayed on you. Clothed in our right minds, the activities of our limbs, the blood running warm in our veins. We just want to thank you, God. want to thank you. want to thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. No one else like you. You know, we've been in a series that we've been ministering on, living up under the horn, and I want to take you back into one of a message, one of the messages that I preach, that I believe that falls in line with this. And then next Sunday, I'm going to come back and minister a fresh word to you. Now, I'm not saying that the word that you're going to get this morning is not going to be fresh. What I'm saying to you is that it's going to line up and give you some spiritual clarity on where we've been going. I'm living under the horn. I'm living under the horn. I'm living under the horn. Can y'all say that in the building? I'm living under the horn. And the flow of the anointing of God is with me and is on my life. And so I want you to watch this this morning. Now, there are four ways that you can sow your seed. And so I want to put this up before you. Uh, in right now because I said we're going to do a flashback on this morning four ways that you can sow your seed today four ways that you can sow your seed look to the screen and then for your Taroma seed always look up at the top because uh, cash app is always bothering me picking on me changing my name changing my name I told you it'd be all right if you sign my name I ain't told you it'd be all right if you change my name sign my name don't change my name all right okay so there's ways that you can sow uh, your seed and your taroma and I want you to prepare yourself for a tremendous outpouring in the Holy Spirit on this morning all right God bless you now watch this and I'll be back in a moment to minister to you if you would get a Bible uh, get your uh, something that you uh, your smartphone or your smart device I'm gonna click on something and I want to talk to you uh, about this great anointing. I'm starting a new series entitled Living Under the Horn, Living Under the Horn. And uh, I, 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 in a few moments, I'm going to reveal unto you uh, this message. It is, it's time for the, for, for the saints of God to realize that Satan is leading a coup in the kingdom. And um, we need to wake up and identify that which is real from that which is counterfeit and I hope that a little bit of the message today uh, will be a blessing to us I, I need a time I need my time um, so I don't want to I don't want to go over unless the Lord leads me there you find me reading out of Exodus chapter number 30 verses 22 uh, to uh, 38 um, I'm a little hot up here Bring me down just a little bit. Uh, Exodus 32, uh, Exodus 30, 22 uh, through 38. Don't get intimidated um, uh, by this. Um, I almost want to set up the, the story the best way that I possibly can. Much is to be said now in the in the church world, not yet. Much is to be said in the in the church world about um, the anointing. And, and, and I believe it's a time now for us to return back to um, the anointing, the Holy Ghost, and the supernatural. In Acts chapter number one, verse number eight, it says, and ye shall receive power after that, or as one translation says, when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then the challenge is, and ye shall be my witnesses. Acts chapter number two says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And then says, suddenly a sound came from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it 
filled the house where all they were sitting and appeared to each of them cloven tongues, split tongues, bilingual tongues as of a fire and it set upon them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak. Now, now, now watch this in verse Acts, Acts chapter number uh, one, verse number eight it says, uh, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be my witnesses. And in Acts chapter number two, and it said, it is set upon them and they began to speak. Anytime the Holy Ghost rests on you, you're going to speak. You're going to speak. You're, you're going to speak. And it, it, when the Holy Ghost comes on you, it ain't going to be no silent thing. When the Holy Ghost comes on you, there's going to be a oral manifestation of what you are feeling on the inside. And they begin to speak with other languages as the Holy Ghost enabled them to speak. When we start talking about the Holy Spirit, uh, many of us goes to those first scriptures, but that's not when the Holy Spirit really makes his entrance into the earth. Um, the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness is upon the face of the deep and the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost is moving upon the face of the water. The Holy Ghost, the third person in the person of the Lord God is in spirit, hovering, brewing over chaos. Wherever there's chaos and calamity, there's a brewing of the Holy Spirit to the time that God will manifest his peace and bring all things into order. Yes. Where's my time at? Where's, where's it at? Where's, where's, where's it at? Where's it at? I'm waiting for the time clock. Thank you so much. And it's, in, it, it, it's important that you understand that God's timetable is not man's timetable. Because if you be honest with God, he has to go through a lot of maneuvering to even set himself in time because he's a creature of eternity. And he never had a beginning, he always was. So there's never a starting point for him. He always was God. He always was omnipotent. He always was agape. He all, all, always, he's the continuous past tense. That's who he is. But after filling us with the Holy Spirit, he relaxes because he knows that over the conflicts and the issues that we have in our personal lives, there's a brewing, a hovering of the Spirit and the presence of the Almighty God, which makes this thing work because he knows that the Holy Spirit is going to drive us back to him no matter what. It's gonna drive us back to him no matter what. And, 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 and it helps us to see the maturity or the immaturity in the saints when calamity hits a person's life. We tend to, in the church, X the person out forever when they went through a situation that God may be setting them up for a testimony to minister to thousands of people so that they can overcome by not having to go through what you went through. Yes. Just the understanding of that whole piece. I want to talk to you a little bit about, about that on tonight. I want to talk to you also about a boy by the name of David who has no kingly aspirations. He's not politicking, nor is he trying to uh, position himself for anything great other than the fact that his dad told him, handle the family business. But God had another plan on the other side. And in order to move him into his position of greatness, he's going to need oil. And that's what I want to talk to you about for a little while. I want to talk to you from this series entitled Living Under the Oil. Living Under the Oil. It is the art of the apothecary. Living Under the Oil. That's what I want to talk to you 
about. And I want to tell you, this is what happens when the oil flows. The oil of God flows. There's a number of things that happens. Exodus 30, 22 through 38. We might not read all of that, but it reads like this. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto these principal spices, of pure myrrh five hundred shekels, and of sweet cinnamon half so much, even two hundred and fifty shekels, and of sweet calamus two hundred and fifty shekels, and of cassia five hundred shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, olive, and hen. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be an holy anointing oil. So now in verse number 25, it says this. Read that again. Watch what it says. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment. Uh huh. An ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. An ointment that is compound after the order of the apothecary. After the order of of the apothecary. This is very, very important. After the order of the apothecary. Uh huh. It shall be an holy anointing oil. And it shall be a holy anointing oil. Three. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all his vessels, and the candlestick, and his vessels and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels, and the laver and his foot. And thou shalt sanctify them, that they may be most holy. Whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, this shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured, neither shall oh ye God. make Keep uh -huh. any other like it yes. after the composition of it. Uh -huh. It is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. Mm -hmm. Whosoever compoundeth any like it, or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger, shall even be cut off whosoever from shall his people. compound anything compound anything like it or whoso whosoever shall find that the this oil was uh, um, assembled and uh, take it into a lab and figure out how to make it and then make it and start selling it is going to be selling their death this is this is a holy oil and this oil is to be poured on the heads of the elders, the ministers, the evangelists, the missionaries, those that are going to serve within the organizational structure when the church goes into its final stage of ministry that we refer to as cathedral. And everyone in the room, if you can just help me for our audience at home, just say cathedral, cathedral. cathedral. Cathedral is the seat of the bishop, and a time will come where there will be individuals who have gone through hardship, through crisis, through storms, and then they'll be anointed after the crisis, the hardships, and the storms, and become loyal individuals to the temple. They become unmovable, unshakable. Why? Because the feet of them have been anointed to stand, mm. and the hands of them have been anointed to serve. And the heads of them have been anointed to think and to see past satanic stuff. This oil is to be made and uh, anointed and then the crest or the horn or the vessel to which the oil was made and after it's empty is to be cracked. There'll be no need for this oil again. This is not the oil that you anoint people with once every month. It's one time. And watch what the Bible says. And the Bible says, this all shall not touch the flesh of any person. Now, he's not talking about your hand or your head because you have to actually anoint the person. When he refers to shall not touch the flesh, it means that you shall not anoint an arrogant person. 
You shall not anoint a person that has uh, 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 um, uh, lasciviousness and has, you know, people have issues but have no uh, intent or desire to change because whatever you put this anointing on, this anointing is going to manifest the total glory of God even on a person who is not worthy to carry it. For the gifts and the callings of God is without repentance. Now, the reason why I'm preaching this and the reason why it comes to me so strongly is because out of the 20 years of pastoring the church, I've never done this. I'm getting ready to do it. I'm getting ready to do it. After 20 years of pastors, I don't know what the next five or 10 years is going to look like or is going to be like. But what I do know is that people are not loyal to anything. People are not committed to anything. Anything that happens shakes people and moves them. It's the reason why marriages don't work. It's the reason why relationships don't work. It's the reason why jobs don't stay. People have not been anointed to be steadfast, unmovable, oh always abounding in the work of the Lord, for you know as much as your labor is not in vain, that nothing can transpire, nothing can happen to you that will move you once this anointing is poured on you. But notice what the word of the Lord said. He said that you're to make this after the art of the uh, 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 apothecary. He didn't say go to the apothecary for the apothecary to make it. He said, make it after the art of the apothecary, which means that the science that the apothecary uses to make this anointed all, you're to use those same principles, but do not go to him to do it. Well, Bishop, why not? Then what is an apothecary? An apothecary is a, um, he's a chemist. He's a perfume maker. He's a gatherer of incense. He also deals in witchcraft and in roots. He functions in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in, in many forms of the arts, yeah, like witchcraft, etc. And so while he has tremendous understanding about roots and plants and spices and so on and so forth like that, his heart is not rendered to the Lord. So God says we need what he does, but we need a holy hand to touch it and a holy hand to handle it. And unfortunately, we have a lot of people that are inside the ministry who are gifted, but they don't have holy hands. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? He that has clear, clean hands and a pure heart. This is what the Bible is saying. And so we're not to go to the apothecary to get it. Now, uh, where, where would I go to an apothecary to get anything from it? Well, it's called Bath and Body Works. It's called the body shop. If you look, ever lived in New York City and you're walking down Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn and stuff like that, apothecaries are lying the streets. Uh, they're, they're here in, in, on Favel Street here in, 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 in Durham. Uh, they're Muslims selling awls, Egyptian musk, and so on and so forth like that. Uh, aromatherapy, these different types of things that the Bible is saying will attract different types of spirits. I mean, if you go and you buy aromatherapy that says sleep, you're asking a form or a force to help you to sleep. By what authority is the form of the force getting his strength from to help you to sleep? Then you wonder why you're having these satanic and demonic dreams because you went to an apothecary to usher you into a place called sleep. And the, the best way to sleep, if you, if, if, if you want to sleep, is grab your Bible. Mm. Bible is the greatest sleeping pill there is. You, you get the Bible, you start reading, your behind is going to sleep. But the devil ain't going to have you up all night long finding out about him. <laughs> God bless you, you're going to sleep. All right, so this is what he tells Moses in the first part of the text. All right, then in, uh, um, he tells us in Exodus, uh, uh, no, in Ecclesiastes chapter number 10 and verses 1 and 2, I own, if you would. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, it reads like this. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So he says dead flies uh, causes the ointment of the apothecary to send up a stench. Uh -huh. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. So now the Bible says that flies getting into the holy ointment can contaminate the ointment. So if you go into a temple, anytime you see us dealing with oil, 
Anytime you see us dealing with oil, the oil is administered and then it's immediately covered. We don't want dust in it. We don't want uh, water in it. We don't want flies. We don't want anything that's going to touch that which has been set aside for holy purposes, that it is untouched. It says flies in the ointment of the apothecary because the, once the ointment is set, it's put to fire. And the fire releases the incense and a, an odor and an aroma and a smell. And because the wrong hand touched it, now you can smell a little bit of lilac and a whole lot of doodle. We've all been there. When you walk into a room and it smells like someone washing the floor with a dirty mop. You can smell a little bit of the pine saw, but you can also smell the stench from the mop not being clean, not being washed. George Bloomer preach here today. Preach here today. It is, this is not suggesting, they're not saying that only perfect people can uh, handle this ointment because there are no perfect people. But they are pure people. I'm going to do it one more time. They are no perfect people, but they are pure people. People who have a pure heart and their intentions are always right to do the right thing. Even though they make up some mistakes, it's in their heart to do right. Those are the ones that the Lord would have us to touch and to handle the significance of this oil. In verse number two, it says, wise men, uh-huh. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Now, in the Bible, it talks about the right hand and the left hand. And the left hand is where you do dirty business. Which one is the left hand? This is my left hand. You do, do dirty business. The right hand is the right. Well, for me, the whole discussion of right hand and left hand is a bad discussion for me. Because guess what? I'm left-handed. Mm -hmm. The president of the United States of America is left-handed, and, and Obama was left-handed. We got a whole lot of left-handed people. We, we, we saw Obama's left hand. He was pretty good. We saw Trump's left hand. Um, not so much. <laughs> it's, 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 it's. So when you start reading, you got to make sure that you don't allow the metaphors or the symbols or the types to drive you away. Because... Although I do everything with my left hand, my right hand is in it. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I do mm -hmm. as best as I possibly can. I want to make sure that I'm doing right. Even in my thinking, make sure I do the best that I possibly can. Yes. But I don't write with my right hand. When you write with both hands, it's called what? Ambidextrous. I'm not ambidextrous. I'm left-handed. I can get some things done with my left hand. Now, one time, I used my right hand. I spent some time in Rackers Island for the use of the right hand. I don't want to use that hand no more. This is the slowest church on the planet. <laughs> So our story starts in 1 Samuel chapter number 16. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. Woo. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peacefully? And he said, Peaceably. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me 
to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Now stop right there because that's deep to me. In verse number three, and the Lord called Jesse to the sacrifice. And he says, I will show you who and what his name is going to be. I'm going to tell you who to call. When, when Samuel gets to the house of Jesse, it comes to pass that he looks upon Elam and he says, surely the Lord has anointed him. Well, wait a minute here. God did not ask him to use his ability to see posture and stature, to look on the outward of his garments and to see his six pack and his nails manicured, to see his hair in a, in a, in, 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 in a bun that looks like a prince. God says, this prince that I'm going to put on the throne ain't gonna look like one. In verse number three, and Jesse called to the sacrifice and I will show you what thou shalt do and thou shalt anoint him, no, what thou shalt do and who you shall anoint unto me and I will give unto you his name. I'm gonna tell you his name. In verse number six, he's pulling people out that God didn't tell, God had already given him the instructions. And that's the problem that we have many times with elders. And that's how you can tell that the all is not on them because they continue to do what they want to do, even though you gave them the instructions of how it's going to go when you get to where you're going. Okay. Watch this here. And he said, he said, and it came to pass uh, that when he had come, he had looked on Eliam and he said, surely the Lord's anointing is before him. Mm. Verse number seven says, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. And the Lord said unto Samuel, your problem is that you keep on looking on the outward. Uh-huh, read. Or on the height of his stature. Yeah, and you're looking at how tall this man is. Uh-huh. Because I have refused him. Yeah, he said, but I want you to know he's got posture and he's got, he's got stature. He's got a name, but he's not mine. I have refused him. I've rejected him. He's been bucking for this position since he was born oh and he'll never get it. Oh Whoa! Shut up, Watch this here, uh-huh. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Yeah, I For don't man... see the way man see, God said, uh-huh. For man looketh on the outward appearance. Yeah, you keep on looking on the outward. But the Lord looketh on the heart. See, that's how they miss George Bloomer. That's how they miss George Bloomer. I didn't have the stature. I didn't have the posture. I didn't have the etiquette. I didn't have the articulation. I didn't have the schooling. But I had God's anointing on my life. And I'm speaking to many people who are watching right now. The anointing of God is on your life. Watch this here. Uh huh. Then Jesse called Abinadab yeah. and made him pass before Samuel. Yeah. And he said, neither hath the Lord chosen this. The Lord didn't choose you either. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by. Uh huh. And he said, neither hath the Lord chosen this. Uh huh. Watch this here. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before seven Samuel. Seven of the sons passed before him. And Samuel said unto Jesse, yeah. the Lord hath not chosen these. Yeah. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are, are here all thy children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest. And are behold, here all these your children? And he said unto him, there remaineth one more. But if I might add to the text, and I will. He says, there remain one more. And um, he doesn't have stature. Notice he have lot uh, articulation. His hair is matted. There's dirt up under his nails. He smells like sheep dung. He talks to himself. He's a little feminine. He writes poems and sings songs. Wow. He does not fit within the order of what you're asking for. But if you want me to call him, I'll call him. Now, in the Bible days when you had the horn of the Lord, the anointing of God would go and get into the horn, the ram's horn, and settle there. At the time of the consecration of whoever was supposed to be consecrated, the closer you got to the horn, the horn began to rattle and shake. This whole time, seven times, there's no rattling or shaking of the horn, simply because the one who's supposed to be anointed is not close to it. 
The rambling that you keep on hearing in your life is because there's an oil that is trying to get on your head. And sometimes the rambling is jail. Sometimes the rambling, oh yeah. Sometimes the rambling is the loss of job. Sometimes the rambling is your divorce. Sometimes the rambling, because God is trying to move you from the place that is trying to hold you from getting to the place that God has anointed for you to be. Oh! There's another one. If you want me to call him, I'll go out and call him. I'll go out and get him. And they call him and David comes in. Uh, Josephus, the Jewish historian, states unto us uh, that, 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 that Jesse's sons were six and seven feet tall. And here comes David coming in right about four feet something, not even clocking five feet. He comes in. He's not a man of stature. He doesn't look like it. But there's a noise in the house as the ram's horn begins to rattle because the anointed knows who's is supposed to rest upon. The anointed knows who's is supposed to get on. And that's my message today. This is what happens when the oil flows, when the anointing flows. This is exactly what happens. It moves things out of your place and it moves you out of place. Well, let me close. I want you to understand this this morning. Very, very, it's very, very important that you understand this. Let's go to uh, 1 Chronicles chapter, 1 Chronicles chapter number 2, verse number 15, very softly. Verse number 15, I mean verse number 12, verses 13 through uh, 15. Verses 13 through 15. Because Samuel goes to Jesse's house. He gets there and he starts seeing these sons and he starts giving false prophecies. Surely this is the one. Surely this is the one. Surely this is the one. And it ain't none of them. And he does it seven times. They now call David eight. Eight is the number of new beginnings, but it, David is not number eight. David is number seven called in the position of eight. Sounds like your book, right? It sounds like how that you can be a first man in a second man's position or an eighth man in a seventh man's position or a seventh man in an eighth man's position or a seventh man in a first man's position but your true existence is where God has lined you up at so we keep on telling everyone that David is Jesse's youngest son and we get that because a scripture talks about how that they go to war and David is with two of his brothers and the scripture says, and his first brother and his second brother and David is the youngest. Doesn't say that he's the young son. He's the youngest of them in the order to which they were born. So I need to establish this before we finish. Watch this here. It says in uh, uh, 1 Chronicles chapter number 13, uh, verses uh, uh, seven number two, verses thirteen through fifteen. It reads like this: And Jesse begat his firstborn Eliab, and Abinadab the second, and Shema the third, Nethaneel the fourth, Radai the fifth, Ozim the sixth, David the seventh. And David is the seventh son. Well, if David is the seventh son, who is the son that was in place number seven? Because David is showing up in place number eight. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it one more time. Then who is the son yeah. that is showing up mm -hmm. in place number seven? Because David is showing up in place number eight. But the scriptures tell us that David's place, position, is number seven. So David was supposed to be called in the first lineup, but he wasn't. Because he did not fit, glory be to God, the profile of how kings look. Mm -hmm. In this season, God is about to call individuals that don't fit the profile, don't even look like it at all. They do not fit the profile. Look at somebody say, you don't fit the profile. You don't fit the profile. You, you don't fit. And because you don't fit the profile, people are discrediting you and they're looking uh, and they're discounting you and they're saying that you don't belong there. But David is anointed. Now, let me go a little further. They don't mention the name of of the son that stood in David's place because the son that is standing in David's place glory be to God is a counterfeit he is an imposter this is a count I'm gonna put do that counterfeit 
he is countered to fit a position that he cannot produce the job. He is not anointed to do what David is anointed to do. David is out up under the tree, glory be to God, waiting for the oil to come on, his ability to defeat lions and tigers and bears, to defeat giants. He's waiting for the anointing to prove that he is who God has anointed him to be. David is not called to be king. David was created to be king. There is a difference. And many of you are continuing to wait on your call when you need to figure out what were you created to do. And so when David got to this particular place in his life, he goes and he sits down and he says, God, I do not understand it. So the Lord speaks to him in Psalms 127. He says, listen, I want to tell you this, that all of your days have been written. Ah, shut up. He said, I knew your unformed, your unframed existence. There was never a time that you was not king. Yeah, I know you went through hardship. I know you went through disappointment. I know you went through pain, but I had to carry you that way if you were going to be a king. I can't have a king sitting on the throne that cannot be touched with the feelings of the, the, of the infirmities of the people that he's going to survey over. So I allowed you to go through a little bit of hell. I allowed you to go through a little bit of storms. I allowed you to go through a little bit of crisis in order to get you to the place to be able to understand because there is an Absalom coming. There is a traitor coming. There is a Bathsheba coming. But there's also a Solomon coming. And out of your loins I'm going to do great and mighty works. I just want to get you away from the apothecary. I want you to get away from all of those, glory be to God, who pretend to have it and really don't have it. That this is your I feel my preach now. That this is your hour. This is your season. This is your time. This is your turn. And you were uh, uh, created for this. And now I'm going to place my anointing on you. That wherever the soles of your feet shall tread, you shall prosper. Whatever your hands are set to do, you shall prosper. And nothing by any means is going to be able to hinder or block you. You're going to go through hell, but you're coming out all right you will go through assassination attempts but you're going to come out all right and you'll be able to write psalms you know i walk through the valleys of the shadows of death i'll fear no evil for thou art with me his rod and his staff shall comfort me you prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil. my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my appointed time. Look at your neighbor. Say, oh neighbor, this is what happens when you are anointed. When you are anointed and hell breaks out in your life, you have the power to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles. You have the power to go into the presence of God and come out with victory. Yeah. Look at somebody say, oh neighbor, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because this is what happens when the oil flows. When the oil flows, God turns things. When the oil flows, your body is healed. When the oil flows, your kids finish college. When the oil flows, your husband that ran out, he runs back. When the oil flows, the naysayers has got to praise you. When the oil flows, the bankruptcy turns in your favor. When the oil flows, the repo man brings the car back when the all flows I got a river I got a river of life flowing out of me makes the lame to walk and the blind to see opens prison doors sets the captive free I got a river I got a river I got a river there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. This is what happens when the all flows. This is what goes on when the all flows. At 
accusation and criticism uh, final stage before spiritual promotion uh, you go through hell uh, but you come out singing uh, you go through hell uh, but you come out dancing uh, you go through hell uh, but you come out rejoicing uh, no revenge uh, no anger uh, no bitterness uh, there's a laugh uh, down in your spirit uh, and a chuckle uh, in your lips uh, you will bless the Lord uh, at all times uh, his praises uh, shall continually uh, be in your mouth uh, for he has uh, anointed me uh, with a brand new anointing uh, that no weapon uh, uh, that's formed against me uh, shall prosper uh, this is what happens uh, when the oil flows uh, this is what goes on uh, when the oil flows uh, debts are cancelled uh, wealth is transferred yes uh, yes uh, yes uh, I speak it over your life right now uh, tell yourself uh, there's an oil uh, flowing uh, on me uh, there's an anointing uh, flowing on me I can hear the rattle of the ram's horn there's a rattle in my spirit I can't sleep at night there's a rattle in my spirit I dream dreams of success and prosperity there's a rattle in my spirit rattle for this is what happens when the oil flows say yeah whatever be tithe God will take care of you beneath his wings his love will abide God will take care of you this morning, get the flies out of the ointment. The fire is on its way to your ointment. And when it touches the ointment, there will be a fragrance that fills the air. A supernatural fragrance that will fill the air. Bible tells us that Mary Madeline came to Simon's house. Lazarus, who Jesus had raised from the dead, was there. And she walks in with a box of alabaster oil. The box was made out of marble, sealed with wax on the inside of it, to hold the oil and to prevent the fragrance of the oil from getting out. The box is sealed. It's a year's wages attached to the box. And she walks into the room and there she sees Jesus. The prostitute, the girl that's been sold many times over. The only way you can get into the alabaster all box, you can't open it and close it. You gotta crack it. Have you been smashed? Have you been cracked? Have you been broken? Have you been dropped? Have you been misunderstood? And when she cracks the box, she pours it on his head. It drips down through his body, ends up on his feet. She gets down on her knees and begins to dry it with her hair. Bible says the entire room fills with the fragrance and the aroma of it. Judas says, we could have used this to feed the poor. Jesus says, let her alone. She's embalming me. She is preparing me for my burial. Now, according to the Jewish customs, you die and the next day, the women comes to embalm you, to anoint the body. On the first day of the week came the mother of Jesus and that Mary to the tomb where Jesus was laid to anoint his body. But he had already risen, for there was no need to anoint his body. 
at the tomb because the body had been anointed at the house. Some of you are waiting for something to happen that already happened to you. You're waiting to receive something that you've already gotten. You just need to figure out how to activate it. This is what happens when the all flows. Bow your heads. Closing song. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the star, we'll understand all of the things that we went through when we were in this body. Until then, we need divine revelation and understanding as to what God is doing. Maybe so many things I cannot do or hear. So many things that I look to you, dear God, for answers and because my understanding is limited, I don't get it. But I ask you today, in the name of Jesus, to make me aware of the anointing that is resting and flowing on my life and set me free from every imposter, every spirited person that doesn't have an ounce of the Holy Ghost on the inside of them, expose them in my life. For in this season, I'm going forth, anointed with a left hand, but a right heart. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for that anointing is flowing right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the stars, we'll know less day to sing his praise as if we've just begun. There is a fountain that is filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein, and sinners plunged beneath the flood lose all their guilty stain. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight. Now I'm happy all the day. See, I have an assignment, and the assignment that is on my life is to make sure that you stay connected with God. We're living under the horn. I hope you enjoyed the flashback message. I hope you enjoyed it today and apply the principles of it to your life in Jesus' name. Well, it's time for you to sow your seed and give your offering. It is seed sowing time right now. Anytime you hear that sound, I don't know, that's become the new, the door here. that's our online streaming song. I, I, I feel that, I figured that if you can uh, repent, uh, you can be a great giver again. Because one-tenth of whatever that you have belongs to God. It belongs to him, and so you ought to just give it to him. All right? All right? Are you ready? Are you ready? Ready? Ready to do this? Four ways that you can sow your seed. Four ways you can sow your seed. All right. Uh, text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving, BethelFamily.org. Cash app, uh, dollar sign, BFWC 515. Or mail to 515 Dow Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27701. For your Taroma seed, look to the screen. Look to the screen. There's been a cash app change. Dr. George Bloomer. Dr. George Bloomer. 
Dollar sign, Dr. George Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Ah, get your seed in the ground and sow it this morning. God is going to bless you real good. Remember, no summer blues, no summer blues. Mm, while I'm down here praying, Lord, search my heart. Oh, while I'm down here praying. Lord, search my heart. While I'm down here praying. Lord, search my heart. Oh, you know when I'm right. Hey, you know when I'm wrong. Text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving, BethelFamily.org. Cash app, dollar sign, BFWC 515. Or mail to 515 Dow Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27701. Look to the screen, look to the screen. Uh, Dr. Dollar Sign, Dr. George Bloomer. Zell Bl Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Or, woo, you can even mail it to GGB. Bloomers Ministries, P.O. Box 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. Oh, oh, oh. I said, search me, search me, Lord. I said, search me. Mondays through Friday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Oh, you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this. July the 7th, we start back with the Food Pantry. July the 7th. I know you ain't seen us through the month of June, but here we come. Uh-huh, right after 4th of July. Okay, so you spend up all your food stamp money. Then you have to come see me. And you spend all your food stamp money. You getting a lot of food stamps, don't you? Come on that line. You need that for people who's having it hard. Because you know, sometimes when you're meeting the needs of the, the needy, you got to help the greedy too. Uh. You know, whether I'm right or wrong, search me, search me. close out the service tonight uh, oh, oh, wow. we open up the, the week tonight I'm sorry we open up the week tonight and we close out on Friday look forward to seeing you on the awesome prayer line where would we be had it not been for that we did a survey in the church and through the corona virus we have not had a death in this church due to corona now maybe somebody's family members that but we have not had not one not one and the few people that contracted the uh, coronavirus during that season uh, none of them had to go on the ventilators none of them went on the ventilators 
they're telling me that only 20% of the people that went on ventilators came out of the hospital. That number 600 and something thousand, that's ventilators suppressing that thing. But thanks be to God that gave us the victory. He protected us and he kept us. Woo! Yeah. You know when I'm right and when I'm wrong. All right? So now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest remain in the Bible with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Have a great, great afternoon. Bless you.